This is how a bright overcast day looks when shooting in a raw file format. Raw data is exactly what it says. Nothing is added by the camera, which can result in a dull flat looking image. Whereas a JPEG will apply various camera algorithms such as white balance, noise reduction, sharpening, file compressions, etc. Many cameras offer a black and white setting with two or three variations. If you set your camera to shoot in black and white and you are shooting in a raw file format, you will actually be shooting the scene in colour and may not see a black and white version. Any settings you choose are only applied to a JPEG. Although most cameras display a small thumbnail of the image you've just shot, note that this will only be a thumbnail. The actual raw file will be in colour. However, DxO Photolab 7 has a few enhancements that can be applied. So let's start off by showing you a very simple and quick way to convert this colour photograph into a black and white image. So we go on to this menu system here, the first um, icon here is light, the next one is colour. Let's click on that one and the monochrome icon or black and white icon. Now by default it's going to select neutral black and white. Um, but I'm going to actually select the faded version here because I want to alter the tones myself. Now one of the advantages of working with a raw file or a colour file is that all the colour information is still available for me to use. So if I go down here onto the channel mixer I can actually alter now the yellows or greens. They will just alter there and see we can alter this. Now if it was a true monochrome picture then you would not have this control on here. So here we've got the image already in monochrome. I'm not particularly happy with that um, but as I say I wanted it in faded black and white. There are some other options here. We've got a balance setting which gives a little bit more contrast on there. We've got a strong setting and we've got back to neutral black and white. As I say I want to alter all the tones myself. So I'm going to go back into the colour image now and to start with we're going to remove these two cards. Now I prefer to actually work on the, the raw file itself for any retouching. That way I'm not going to be influenced by different shades of grey. I can see the colours and I can match up quite easily. So let's remove these two cards here from the scene which is rather spoiling it. We're going to use the clone tool for this, so we can find that up here under the retouch icon. And here we have a box on the left and we can either repair or clone. And it's actually clone I want to do. Most image editing applications have a clone tool of sorts. They all work in a slightly different way. And here we have in this DxO Photo Lab 7, um, it works in a slightly different different way and it takes a little bit of getting used to but it actually does work extremely well. So just paint over the first car or the van and it's actually selected an area here which it's not totally appropriate. So you can actually move this the source or the source file to wherever you want and that looks okay. If I take the cursor off we can see what's happened. I can retouch all this in a moment. I'm going to take out the second car now and it, looking for a bit of gravel to pick up on and I think we've got it about there. You can move this around so you can see exactly what's coming in there. I've got a bit of tree in there. I'm going to leave that be for the time being. The other bit I want to concentrate on now is this gravel path here. So we can just go over there and I'm going to pick up a bit of the fence, not much of it, just a bit of it. You can spend quite a bit of time trying to get it right. So that looks fairly natural now. Um, again this little bit here where we've got slight variations in the green, I'm going to move that above there. And let's just Try and pick it up. So now there we go. It's all looking fairly natural. So I'm quite happy with that. Now we can go on to the black and white conversion. 
I'm going to go to the faded and we're going to alter our own turn, tonal values on this. So the next stage is to actually do something about this very pale sky. And I'm going to go to the top here and select the local adjustments. And we have got a series of icons here. These are all for doing various tasks and local adjustments. I'm going to choose a control point to start with. And don't worry if you're not following what's happening. I will explain it as we go along. So let's add one control point and I'm going to push it right in the middle here. here. Here we've got the control point and we've got this big red splodge in the middle. We can actually change the color of this if we don't like the red. If we don't like that we can choose a green color and click OK and that becomes green now. Um, what I'm going to do is alter the tonal values within this circle here. We're going to make this darker and bring some texture back into the clouds again. So now once we've got a control point set we get all these options now that will enable us to alter this control point. So let's go on to the first one the clear view plus and this generally speaking brings out quite a lot of texture and we can drop the highlights down a fraction bit. Be careful not to go too far because you'll get this hot spot in the middle there. So it's only a little bit on there. Mid turns we can alter those as well. Okay so now we've got this one here. What I want to do is actually have those values right across the top window there. So what we have to do is so shift and D for duplicate and now we've got another one which is on top of there. But if we move that one here what we've done is we've taken all the values that we've set in that one and placed them there. We can go again another, make sure it's highlighted, we we'll do another shift and D and we can move this one over to this side here. And we can just gradually as you can see build up the texture in the sky and we're going to do another shift and D. It only takes a couple of clicks on there and any one of these we can alter independently of the others as well. And we'll do one more shift and D and we're going to place that one on this side here. And there we go. I could do with just slightly darkening that one so we take the highlights down on there a little bit more. There we go. And possibly on this one here as well. Take the highlights. This is a very convenient way of doing it. Um, so therefore I can control everything within this whole area. Um, the other thing is I'd like a little bit more darkness on the top here. So I'm going to create another control um, section here. So we go up there and we're going to choose the gradient filter. So let's click on that and we're going to drag a filter down from the top here which I'm going to just add some more clarity on that one there. And we can see that's really brought that down, highlights down as well. And we've brought some darkness in the blue on the top there. Okay, so that's one section. We can add as many control points as, as we'd like to the image. But bear in mind, when we start adding a lot of control points, it may start slowing your computer down a bit. So I'm going to add another control point. So we click on add another and... I'm going to put it down here in this hedge here. Now one of the interesting things about these control points is that I can control the amount of area that is actually going to be affected. So if we go into this drop down menu here and we select black and white it's just going to show me there exactly what's being affected. So I can move this around and you can see exactly it's just going to affect that bush only. I can narrow it down as well. There we go. And what I want to do with that one is make it... Oh, that wasn't a very good move. Let's move it back again. You can try and find the right spot for it. And we can now adjust the luma and the chroma values. So we bring that one down. You see it's expanding it a bit. So now we take it the other way. It's always worth experimenting with these sliders because sometimes you, you may not get the effect you want until you've actually 
taking them maybe to the extreme. So if I take it right to the top there, you can see exactly it's only going to be the leaves that are affected now. Um, but I just want a little bit more around there. So we've more or less selected that entire bush now. And I'm going to make this slightly darker. See, there we go. We've, we've darkened down the bush. And we can do the same on this side here as well. And I'm going to create a new control point for this. And we're going to make quite a big one this time. And again, adjust the luma range. So just the, the bush there is affected. And we're going to make that blacks darken them down a bit. So you can see we're starting to build up the tone, tonal values in the picture here. On the bottom of the grass here is also looking a little bit, uh, well, insipid really. And um, so we're going to choose a new mask and or a new adjustment. And we're going to use the gradient tool once again. And let's take that up. The gradient tool and we can now alter the exposure we haven't got the luma and chroma on this particular um, gradient but we've got the exposure we can control the exposure we can control the shadows and the intensity of the clear view plus we can make that bring a bit of bounce back into the um, area there or bring bring a bit of contrast into the area. Highlights just gonna zap those up a fraction. Contrast maybe as well. Some of this micro contrast is quite good actually. It sort of gives the appearance of the grass being slightly sharper. Um, there we go. And we can if we want to compare now and see where we are. At, we just click on the top compare button and now I also want to put some more detail into this land here so let's use another control point and just going to bring that in there and now we've got the chrome and luma available back to us again now the center point actually marks the, the area that's going to be affected so if we put on a gray that's going to sort of uh, affect that area alone. And the advantage of having a, a color file which has been converted into black and white is that the, the application actually recognizes colors. Although you may not be seeing colors, it, they are in the background. And so just moving it around until I find the right spot. And I can mess around with the Chroma and luminance. Oops, gotten too far. But there we go, that gives a rough idea. And I'm going to take the blacks down a fraction bit just to bring a bit of detail back into their mid tones down. And maybe some contrast on that. Micro contrast usually works quite well. And there you can see what, what's happening on here. The other option I have is also use a brush where we can brush in the different areas. So I'm going to make those hills or mountains slightly darker. And I'm going to use the auto mask brush. And this is quite an awkward one to use actually. So just paint over the hillside there. And now we can alter this one so we're going to make the shadows slightly darker so that hill there has become dark and we're going to do the same on the other side make sure you apply an, a new auto mask on there so that when you alter one it doesn't alter the, every one of them so there we go on there we're going to take the mid turns down a fraction on that one so we've got slightly different 
values from that hill to that hill there. And we're going to do one more water mask, I think, and take this gravel path down a bit. And let's just highlight it. Now, I'm, I'm not sure why uh, DxO has just made these things very sort of uh, unuser friendly because I can't see exactly what I'm painting over. But generally speaking, it does work quite well. So let's take the midturns down. I'm going to try and match the grass, the, the text, the shade on there. Let's take this off this brush. I'm going to match the shade from there to there. So we, it almost looks like it's a continuation there. And I'm quite happy with that. Now, if I want to alter any of the other points there, we can alter things as well. Let's click on there. So this one here, I'm not particularly happy with that. Let's bring it. In fact, what we can do, we can delete this particular point there. So just click on the, click on that one there and then just delete it. So that's taken that out. I'm going to add an extra one there. Maybe I'll do a, a paint one and just over the brush there. And we're going to now take the midtones down a fraction. Highlights down. Just alter this slightly. Now, if we can see it's bled quite a bit over, so we can use the eraser tool now just to take out those bits there. It's only going to affect this particular um, um, selection, as you can see there, and just bring out. It's not going to affect any of the, any of the other control points. It'll only affect the one that's highlighted here. And it's obviously quite a good idea to uh, rename these. So you double click on that, and you can just put whatever name you want in there. So I'm doing a field. There we go. And I can take this one again, just darken it down a fraction bit. And there we have it. Now, once we've gone to this stage here, we can go back to the very first icon here. And we can use the curves just to bring in an overall look to the picture. And the final stage now is to save your file. In fact, I'm not quite happy about that area there. So what we can do is you can fade it as well. So let's just fade that. Fade your opacity on there. So it's just giving a little bit of texture on that. The options of doing the local adjustments is that you can alter different parts of the image but different tonal values. It's a bit like going into a dark room and dodging and burning. But here we can do it on mass here. I will be producing another video and we will look at another application available from DxO and that's called Silver FX Pro and that is ideal for working with black and white. But for the time being, the DxO Photolab 7 does produce some outstanding results. Just requires a little bit of patience, a little bit of practice. And bear in mind that if you're not satisfied with the way images look, you can just click on the reset button and everything goes back to normal again. Mm -hmm.